gotta worry about. Hey guys, what's up? This is Firm, and today I'm going to be showing you a much requested tutorial. It's uh, how to do 2D animation and intros in Cinema 40. So let's jump right into it. But first off, before we do anything, I would highly appreciate it if you guys could go to my channel, uh, go to the first link in the sub box, and then subscribe. It's my motion graphics team. If you are good at motion graphics, you should uh, go ahead and send me some of your work. And if you're good enough, you'll get in. We only have five people, so, yeah. Um, Alright, so yeah, let's jump right in. Uh, for reference purposes, I'll be using the evil intro to show you everything and all that. I might skip to a few other intros, too. Um, Alright, so let's jump right in. Let me just open up Cinema 40. And pretty much, guys, the basis of 2D animation in Cinema 4D is it's uh, spline masking. So, if you don't know what spline masking is, uh, Grayscale Gorilla did a tutorial on it a while back where he had, like, I think he called it the cascading text effect or something. Um, I did a, my own little rendition of that. Oh, it's on my channel somewhere. Um, Alright, so, when you open up Cinema 4D, you have your... your uh, your view and its default at this angle so what you're first gonna want to do is rotate your view and then line up this little blue uh, z-axis marker line it up with the uh, oh, sorry about that line it up with the y-axis the green marker and then center everything along the uh, this dashed line which is your horizon so that means that you're on the very front view if that didn't make any sense to you guys just rotate this until you're facing straight at the z-axis you know so now if you add something it's it's flat and you render it and it looks two-dimensional so but we don't use cubes we just use a plane for example um okay so first thing i like to do when i open up something is change my size and now i'm just going to be showing you how to do uh basic spline masking but actually first you know i'll uh open up the evil intro for you guys and then I'll show you the components of that like break it down really quick um it might run a little laggy because I don't know if my computer sucks but well, first let me fix that there we go I think it's fixed hold on let's see yeah we're good alright Okay, so the intro starts off, it's just a plane that uh, is gray, and then I have a light right here, an area light with a soft shadow map. As you can see in the background, there is an HDRI map. That's just for um, these little things right here, so they reflect the HDRI image, as you can see right there. So it looks nice. Um, that was the only reason for the HDRI map. I had the plane behind it, so and the area map, so when I render it out, you get a nice shadowing behind the logo and everything so everything all the animation you're seeing right now is spline mask with the exception of these little uh, bubbles and these lines those are just hand animated um, but everything else here is spline masking except that too that's scaling but like that it's all spline mask spline mask all of that so right now I will go back into the other window and show you just how to do that really simply Alright, so like I said earlier, line uh, line up your view so you're facing it like dead on. Then I'm going to go ahead and change my size. It's just OCD, you don't really have to do this. Okay, now I'm just going to give you a quick little example one. So I'm going to get, uh, let's put three colors. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Red. Yellow and green. Okay, so once you have your three colors, uh, here, let me go back to the evil intro really quick and show you what I'm going to be showing. So, what I'm going to show you right now is 
this little effect right here where it crosses in. That's a spine mask effect. And uh, the good thing about uh, teaching spine masking is once you teach it one way, it's pretty easy to understand how you can use it in different situations. And it's really versatile. It's one of the most useful things I've uh, learned in Cinema 4D. So I hope it is for you guys as well. So let's start out with a square. Let's make it 200 by 200. I want to make it even. And then if we go to our evil intro, this square right here that I, that I just made in the other one is going to be this black square. So let's go back. This is going to be the black square, or what the black square is the equivalent to. So we've gotten that. Now we want to copy it uh, four times and paste it four times. Sorry. So we have four more. So we have a total of five. Let's go back because we need these extra four for all of these corners. So one, two, three, four, and then we have the center one, which is five. So let's go here. And now we're going to take these four new ones that we just created and we'll make them half the size. So 100 by 100. And now what you're going to want to do is um, you can just do this by eye, it doesn't have to be exact. Just drag each rectangle into the very corner of the big square. And keep in mind that these are splines, these aren't actually rectangles or squares, so if I render them out you're not going to see anything. It'll just, it'll, it'll just be black. Okay, just gonna, oops, and that. Alright, so now we're going to want to select the four little squares and then hit the keyframe button because we want them to be here at frame 30 and we're going to move them up or move the frame bar up to a uh, frame 60 and now let's move all of these rectangles or squares or whatever into the uh, center and then keyframe them so let's keyframe that one now if you don't know what keyframing is you shouldn't be watching this because you have to have a basic understanding of animation to be able to do this all right Keeping this one. Once again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Just more looks good. Alright, and we'll have to probably make some adjustments later. Let's put that there. But I think yeah, I want that a little bit taller. There we go. Okay. So we should have a nice little animation. Yeah. So those are going in, but right now you can't really see anything. It just looks like four squares closing in on one big square. So now here's where we add the spline mask. Let's go to uh, Objects tab, Modeling, Spline Mask. Let's copy and paste it, mm -hmm, I don't know, five times or four times, I don't know. Um, now we're going to take our big square, put it in a spline mask, and then pick any of the other squares, doesn't matter which one, and then put that in. And what that did, what that did uh, is that connected these two splines. So now, even when they're animated, they're still connected. They close off on one another. And we want this little one to disappear, but we want the center one to remain there. So there's four different options. It's just hit and miss. Let's try A subtract B. It's not that. B subtract A. That's what we want right there. So it starts off full and then closes in. And now we're just going to do the same thing. So drag that in drag the spine mask into a new spine mask and then drag the rectangle and then we learned from the last time that was B subtract A do the same thing over again and then just do this for the uh, remaining ones and like I said guys once you have a basic understanding of this you can really do any type of two dimensional animation so there we have this little shish kebab thing looks pretty cool in my opinion and now we're going to just take an extrude nerves and then drag the spine mask in so now it's visible. Now we can see it when we render. I'm going to go ahead and make this only two centimeters thick. Alright, so now to get that uh, other effect. So if we just wash this through, it's just one cross, you know, one color. If we go to the evil intro, we can see that there's three different colors. We have black, and then white, and then red. And they, they uh, go off at different times. So let's do that next. This is really simple. So, pick the color that you want the top one to be. This is going to be the top one, so we'll make it, uh, I don't know, we'll make it red. And then we're going to copy and paste it. And now let's make it the next color, so we'll make it yellow. And now we're going to want to uh, select 
the new one, go to coordinates, and then hit up on the z-axis a few times, maybe five times, so it's five units behind the red one. So if we were to uh, look at it, we would see that the yellow one's actually slightly behind the red one. So now let's copy and paste the yellow one, and then move it five units behind the previous one, and then make it green. But as you can see, if we play it through, it's still the exact same, it's just the red. Um, now to fix that, we're just going to set, we're going to offset our keyframe points. So select the other one, because we're going to leave the first one, which is the red one, as it is, and select both key, keyframe points, and then let's drag them up two times. Let's do the same thing to the green one, but it has to be from the last point. So one, two, then one, two. There we go. So now if we play it through, we have a nice little colored Rasta animation thing. But as you can see, that's just your basic spine mask animation. Uh, using this, you can branch out and do whatever you want and really make a badass intro. So yeah, I hope you guys found this somewhat helpful, and uh, if you have any questions or concerns, just leave them in the comment section, and I'll be sure to try and reply to all of them. So yeah, uh, peace out guys.